Basics of Copyright and Open Content for Educators Hello, my name is Tormo Toikkanen. I am a researcher at Aalto University in Helsinki, Finland and also work in the Creative Commons Finland affiliate team. And this is a rather short presentation into the very basics of copyright legislation from an international perspective. And since in, uh, copyright laws are not uniform throughout the world, an international perspective cannot go too much into the details, but we will cover the, uh, the basics. Uh, this um, presentation and recording both are openly licensed, so you may use them freely according to the uh, Creative Commons license uh, terms, which we'll uh, cover a bit later. So, this uh, presentation will go through three topics mainly. Yeah. Background or history, what, what the, the law currently looks like, and where we are going. And all of this from the point of view of, of education and how it affects educators. So, um, brief history of copyright. Um, I guess I would like to point out that it is a myth to think that the Gutenberg press uh, gave rise to copyright legislation and, and fast printing of books. Um, and uh, rather point out that fast copies of literary works have been done for thousands of years very profitably and that uh, the copyright legislation actually was originally it meant to just give um, certain printing presses uh, exclusive rights to certain works. So it was actually a commercial tool used by the British government to to award exclusive rights to certain certain uh, uh, companies. Uh, the background from France um, highlights or the uh, the roots of copyright legislation from France highlight the moral rights of the uh, author, meaning uh, the author's name should be prominently displayed, uh, the author's um, views and value uh, and literary value should not be uh, diminished, and so forth. And these two tr trends have sort of uh, fo coalesced together into the modern copyright uh, laws. Um, a few decades ago, copyright legislation in each country was very different, but due to uh, international agreements, uh, the general structure of copyright laws in, in quite a few countries has been unified to a point that, that one can talk about international copyright. Uh, and <clears throat> whereas there are certainly detail differences, the general gist of, of, of how copyright works is about the same in all of Europe, United States, most uh, technologically and commercially advanced countries such as also China. And, uh, but, but certainly in, in, in uh, developing countries there's more variance in, in how copyright is handled. So, what does copyright cover? Um, basically, uh, what copyright protects are, uh, are um, two types of things. One of these are works, meaning original, independent, creative works made by people. So these include books, uh, uh, movies, um, statues, art, whatever is original enough that no one else could create the same independently um, is awarded copyright protection automatically. Um, and this is the part that, uh, of copyright that, that protects the creative author and it's meant to, um, to encourage 
creative authors to produce creative works since they get exclusive rights to their works and they can commercially exploit those. In addition to creative works, copyright laws also have related rights which may differ a bit, bit more between countries but basically they are meant to protect certain commercial interests from media companies and media professionals. And these related rights in practice mean that all photographs, all performances, all video and audio recordings and all TV and radio broadcasts in general are protected by right, exclusive rights quite similar to copyright. So this means that pro uh, professional photographers but also anyone else who takes a picture um, doesn't need to strive for originality. You can just take a good picture of an event and you have exclusive rights to that picture. Uh, similarly, uh, if, uh, if an orchestra performs uh, a piece, a, a, a musical uh, composition, they have exclusive rights for their performance. If someone wants to record that, uh, they need permission from the, uh, from the uh, performers. So just as an example, the lecture you are listening to right now is a literary work. I claim it, it is original and, and unique enough to have uh, copyright protection. Uh, as I am reading this aloud, I am performing this literary work. So it's my own. So I have exclusive rights to the literary work and to the performance. I am making an audio recording of my performance by myself and I also have exclusive rights to the audio recording. So as you can see in media production you often get a long chain of, of, of uh, copyrighted um, items and, uh, and certainly if there's different people producing different parts, so one person producing the original content, someone else performing it and someone else recording it and then publishing it online, there's a whole chain of people that you need to get permission from to perform that activity. All right, um, copyright is not um, indefinite. Uh, in most countries, the term of protection is 70 years after the author's death. Um, originally, in the 17th century, the term of protection was 28 years, and this graph shows how the term of protection has increased in the United States. And, um, and um, nowadays, Probably the, the variance of, of channel protection ranges between 50 and 100 years, even more. And then in, in some legislation, such as in the United States, companies can have their own copyright protections, which can e exceed 100 years. And, um, well, yes. For related rights, such as normal photographs and performances, the term of protection is usually lower, typically 50 years or 70 years from publication or original creation of the, of the, uh, of the uh, item in question. All right, so now we know, just in a general stroke, what the, uh, what the um, copyright laws protect. Creative works and certain related rights, photographs, performances, audio, video, basically multimedia. So what does it mean to have something protected by copyright? Um, I did mention briefly moral rights. So the author does have moral rights whenever their work is presented, uh, copied, distributed. Um, their name needs to be present there. Um, but uh, mainly what is interesting and complicated are the commercial rights um, shown in blue here uh, and the key right so all of all the, the uh, rights you see here are exclusive rights awarded to the author so no one else can do these without some kind of uh, permission 
um, and that permission can come fr directly from copyright law so that in certain cases others may be able to reproduce some a work in whole or in part um, or you can get permission from the author by asking or making a contract so the key uh, right I guess is reproduction making copies of works that's an exclusive right to to the awarded to the author uh, publication of the uh, of the work also is the exclusive right of the author. He decides when and how to publish a work. Public performances also also awarded exclusively to the author and it, all dissemination activities which would mean for example printing books, selling them in a bookstore uh, or uh, distributing music as mp3 files in, in an online store those are dissemination activities and again the author is the only person who can do that. So, just continuing the example of this um, lecture you're listening to, um, I certainly have owned the moral rights to the literary work, so I am the author and should be mentioned as such. Um, as I am uh, reading this aloud, or performing this uh, lecture, and, and the uh, lecture is ending up to be in a, in a public space uh, online, in fact, what I am doing is I am performing this publicly. So if I were reading out loud someone else's lecture with the attempt, um, intent to publish it, I would need permission to do so. And then as the audio recording of the performance is ma made and published online and disseminated online, um, I am exercising the rights of reproduction, publication and dissemination. And again, if, if the performance or the literary work were made by someone else, I would need permission for all of these activities. I would need permission to publish the recording online. I would need permission to, to um, uh, disseminate it, uh, share copies and so forth. And as I am licensing this uh, audio recording under an open license, I would need permission to, for that as well. But um, just to keep things brief, basically most interesting activities that you would want to do in an educational setting for works of made by others more or less uh, infringe on the exclusive rights of the author. So this means uh, that you need some kind of permission to do so. Uh, another question is, so what can you do with works made by someone else? First of all, a key distinction needs to be made. Copyright does not protect ideas, it just protects the the physical uh, appearance of the work. Well, with the digital, in the digital world, physical appearance is a bit of a strange term. But basically, the way the uh, the creative work has been uh, expressed. So, in terms of uh, well, this lecture, for example, the order of words, the exact order of words in this lecture is protected under copyright and I own the exclusive rights. But the ideas presented in this lecture certainly are, are not owned by me. So anyone can learn these ideas, use those ideas in their business or what have you. So it's uh, crucially important to distinct, uh, distinguish between ideas and, and, and copyrighted works. So nothing you read or learn from a copyrighted work is by itself protected by any kind of um, exclusive rights. Um, what you also can do is you can resell works you own. So if you buy a book, you can sell it to someone else. Um, and uh, quite a bit of um, uh, controversy, of course, has been raised over the fact that, that online 
content such as digital books and digital uh, music you buy online. What happens is that technically you do not buy a copy for your own, but you actually just purchase a license to listen to that music or read that book on your um, ebook reader and therefore you do not have reselling rights, you do not own the copy and uh, that of course is a bit of a change in, in, in the balance of power in the copyright issues. In most countries private use is also allowed so everybody as private people in their own homes or in, in, in private situations in general can do whatever they want with works. So in general this means that um, if you wish to photocopy a printed book for your own personal use uh, in most countries you can do that. You cannot sell that to someone else or you cannot make those copies uh, many of those and, and distribute to your friends but you can certainly make that one copy for yourself. Then there are numerous detailed uh, limitations to copyright meaning that as the author has exclusive rights to copy, disseminate, publicize and, and present their work the laws, the copyright laws in, in all countries uh, mention some limitations to those exclusive rights. Um, in the United States they use the term fair use, uh, in Britain they use fair dealing and in other countries less so, but, but the general idea is there that lawmakers have identified certain situations in which others should have the right to do something with someone else's work because it benefits the, so the society. A typical example is the right to make a, uh, to take a citation. So you may take uh, a snippet of another's work, so, uh, cite that in your own work and, and engage in, in a dialogue or, or a conversation about that work. And certainly it would be very hard if you could not take a citation from that other work to, uh, to discuss its merits and, and, uh, and uh, aspects. So citation rights is quite generally, I would assume, in most countries considered to, to be something that, that, that is allowed. Um, parody and satire, at least in Europe, in the United States, has been considered to be a, a, a part of uh, free speech, that it, it is allowed to make uh, societal commentary by modifying others' works to that purpose, so satire. Um, and there are numerous other uh, very detailed special cases where something can be done and, and those will definitely vary by country. I'll just give an example, at least in Finland, libraries, if they own a book that is uh, uh, breaking up, physically uh, breaking, they have the right to photocopy those pages and create a new book in essence to replace the one that is being that is is breaking up. So just to to maintain their collection. So that's an example of of uh, of um, very specific limitation. And certainly in in most countries education in general is considered to be quite an important endeavor that that it should be done most governments recognize that educating the young is important and uh, certainly education should somehow relate to what's happening in the world that the educators should be able to access current news um, books uh, uh, you know, scientific knowledge and use that in the educational activities. So there are some kind of um, um, limitations to the exclusive rights of authors related to educational practice. And those will be very different from country to country. And so I can't go into too much detail there. You will just need to check 
what your your nation's own regulations say about um, what what educators can do with with works. Um, just some examples would be that m most likely there are some kind of photocopying uh, regulations that according that according to some rules uh, and limitations, educators may take partial photocopies of of books to use in in education. Uh, there may be rights to present, perform music and other content in an educational setting, and so forth. And we now move on to where copyright is going. And I'll first talk a bit about remixes. So originally the term remix referred to uh, music that was made by using snippets of, of sound from other musical compositions. Um, but nowadays it, it, it has expanded to all realms of media. So a remix may also refer to a nonlinear reinterpretation of a given work or media. So just as an example, this is the piece What It's All About by, by Girl Talk. You may click on the picture for a link to a video that plays the music and shows which snippets of other works have been used in that musical composition. And now, of course, the question is, is this allowed? And that is a difficult question. This activity, DJ activities in general, are sort of considered to be acceptable, but no one really will want to say for sure that this is all perfectly legal. And there are, have been cases where remix artists have been pursued uh, and considered to be violating copyright. But, of course, remixing really has, has been happening all the time. So just an example, Mikhail Agricola was the person who invented the Finnish written language. And uh, there you can see a picture of him. Um, and what he's doing, he's, he has two books open. One of them is the German Bible, and then he's writing a Finnish translation of that. So he's making a, deriv a derivative work of the... Of the um, of the German Bible and creating the Finnish written language as he's doing that. So quite an important academic activity and totally against copyright as we know it now. Happily in the 15th century there was no copyright restriction so this was something that could be done. But just to drive home the point that, that um, all creative w uh, work that is being done is, to some extent, a remix of of others' works. Certainly, to thinking of education and academia, how how scientific research works is that you build on others' results, and um, so and and the current media culture, of course, is very much that uh, that you reuse. Uh, ideas you, re you use even media content from others to quickly create something new, and certainly this is something that's very um, much in use in education. In a classroom, you do not have time for each student to create from scratch, create from nothing, a video composition or a musical composition or or whatnot but rather you want them to reuse existing parts that are available, pictures, music, audio, whatever, uh, Wikipedia content, and mash those together into a new presentation that somehow, and the process of doing that should be educationally valuable and, and, uh, and certainly the availability of this content online currently make gives a lot of uh, potential to create very rich learning experiences for the learners. So the question of course then is 
is it legal? So, unfortunately, what is legal and what isn't legal varies by country to country, so you'll need to figure that one out. But I can give you one tool to, that will make sure that what you are doing with your students is going to be fully legal and, and empowering and allows them to reuse content made by others. And that is open licenses and specifically Creative Commons licenses. So, um, the idea here with open licenses is that as an author, let's say the author of this photograph of a, of a reindeer from Lapland in Finland, um, as the author publishes their work somewhere, most likely online, they can give permission beforehand to everybody that, that, the, that everybody can you do something with this picture. And it makes sense to use a standardized um, vocabulary, let's say, or a standardized license to do, do that. And the most used open license in the world is Creative Commons, CC for short. And that's what I'll be talking about, the CC licenses, and how those make it easier for, for others to create richer presentations. So just a, as an example, this picture of a reindeer. Um, since I wanted a picture of a reindeer into my presentation, um, I could have, you know, traveled to Lapland with a camera and taken a picture of a reindeer. But that, you know, takes quite a bit of time and effort. Um, it's much faster to just search online for a published picture of a reindeer and reuse that. But can I do that legally? In this case, since the picture is just basically decoration, uh, I cannot. What I have done with this picture, I have made a copy of it, I've attached it to this uh, presentation, I've um, uploaded it online, published it, and, and uh, also given others permission to copy this presentation onwards and remix it further. I needed all of those permissions from the, from the photographer of this picture. Happily, uh, that person has al had, ha had already given those permissions to me and to everybody else by attaching a Creative Commons license to their photograph. And this is how it works. Just on a, some examples, um, Flickr may be the most known photo sharing site in the world and it has over 200 million photographs with Creative Commons licenses. Jamendo possibly is the largest repository of music um, and musical recordings that are licensed under an open license. And the reason why people would do this, put something online and give others permission to reuse that, well, there are several reasons, but one of them is that if they are not going to be commercially exploiting those uh, pieces of content, then it makes sense to not hold on to all of the exclusive rights that the copyright legislation gives them, but rather trade them in for more visibility. I mean, just as an example, uh, this photograph would not have been in my presentation if it did not have an open license that allowed me to use it. I would, there, there might have been better photos of, uh, of uh, reindeer, uh, but I would have had to go through the trouble of contacting the author, explaining what I would do with their photograph and ask permission to that, for that, and uh, it's quite likely you know, you know, a lot of work, a lot of time, and might not work out. So I quite simply will not even look at photographs that do, do not have an open license. So content with an open license gets more visibility, it also gets reused in other works, and the author is mentioned every time their work is, is reused somewhere. So, in effect, they are trading in some of their exclusive rights to get more visibility and more reputation. Another reason to use open licenses is to make collaboration possible. This is um, quite a 
simple thing, really. I mean, if you just consider that I would write, or someone else, you know, let's say you write uh, a nice article on some topic, uh, most likely it, it will be creative enough and you will have exclusive rights to that article. If you now post it onto a wiki and allow, technically allow others to edit that, they can do that. But legally, what they are doing, they are going to be making adaptations of your work, and they cannot do that without your permission. So, in a small group, let's say in a classroom, the you know small group of students may agree among themselves that they will you know create something together and change each other's work and 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 come up with a joint output, and that's okay. But if you want to extend that collaboration to happen outside of that small group, so you know, something online where it, totally random people may see that, may find that process and join in, then you need some way to give others the legal permission to join in. And how you do that is with, a, with an open license, a Creative Commons license. So Wikipedia, with its over 10 million articles, all of that content is licensed under Creative Commons licenses that allow changes to be made. And just as a qu quick tip, I, I'm sure all of you are aware of Wikipedia, but as a quick tip, I recommend you check out Wikimedia Commons, uh, which is a sister project, and it has multimedia, openly licensed, very high quality, very well categorized and curated, and there you will find useful multimedia from all walks of life, that you can use quite freely in your educational practice. So that's something worth checking out. I also need to mention open educational resources. So in addition to general content, open content, um, quite a few uh, educational institutions have started creating open educational resources. So content that is meant for education and that is licensed with an open license. Um, and here's some just few examples of, of places online where you can find courses, resources and, and, and other educational content. You can just click through the logos to see them. You can also click on the uh, arrow at the bottom right corner to go to a legal link that, that uh, lists quite a few additional um, repositories of, of photos, sound effects, video, music, um, text, and so forth, fonts and 3D models and you know, open content from all areas of life. All right, and now we will look at how the Creative Commons licenses work, so in practice, how you use them and how to um, how to understand them. And this is quite simple, really. The Creative Commons licenses have four terms that may be combined to form a license. So you just need to understand what these these uh, terms mean. Um, all of these terms have a physical icon, a short two-letter acronym, and a name. So this is the attribution. Uh, clause um, basically says that the author needs to be mentioned whenever the work is being used. You also should mention what the original CC license has been, where, where the um, content has been, how the content has been published. And certainly, if you do make modifications, this is just general general inst instruction. You need to differentiate between what the original author has made and what you have made. So, no sense in, in you claiming that you've made, done everything since you're using someone else's work, but also do not blame the original author for your modifications. So, quite simply, mention who made the original content. The second clause is ND, no derivatives, which says that ah, you are not allowed to adapt and change this material. So, content with this term can only be distributed as it is in its original form and cannot be modified. So, for example, if it's text, you cannot translate it. If it's a photo, you can't really crop it to or otherwise make significant changes to it. 
but Creative Commons content without this uh, term does allow adaptations and changes to be made. The SA share alike term says that if you do make adaptations, you need to publish them under the same license. So this is there to ensure that the freedom given by the original author is retained in future versions. And this is used, typically used in, in wiki environments and other, other situations where it's sort of expected that others can improve the original work, make it better. So it makes sense to ensure that the better versions also have the same license so everybody can continue to use them. And finally, the fourth a term, NC, non-commercial, limits the CC license to only cover non-commercial activities. So then you cannot copy and distribute and change and, and republish for commercial purposes. And this is you know, slightly problematic because what is commercial and non-commercial can be a bit difficult sometimes to discern. Uh, but certainly something that you need to take into consideration and think about the educational practice you are involved in. Is that commercial activity? And certainly if you're a professional teacher and you get paid for, for teaching, um, but that doesn't really make it commercial yet, since um, it's more, it has more to do with is the institution you are working in, is it a for-profit or non-profit organization? Are the students paying to um, participate in that, in that uh, education? Are they, do they have to pay for material? Uh, all of those factor into deciding or estimating whether your activity is commercial or non-commercial. Um, if you are not sure, then it's probably best to avoid NC licensed content since you might not really be allowed to use them. All right, combining these, uh, these terms or clauses, uh, we come up with uh, six Creative Commons licenses. They each have the CC logo and then a different combination of these terms. The most open license is on the top left, CC BY which means that you can do whatever you want with the content as long as the original author is mentioned. You can change it, combine it with other materials, sell it, uh, sell, your, sell it originally, sell your modifications to it, whatever you want. Below it is CC by SA, which has the added limitation that w if you change the content, you need to publish it under the same license. You can s still you know, charge money for it, but you basically need to give everybody, everybody else the right to also um, make copies and change it further and distribute those changes. And below that is CC by ND, so no derivatives, so that, uh, that doesn't allow adaptation. So what you can do, you can, you can just redistribute the works as it is, mention the author, but you can't change it. And on the right-hand side, you have the same three licenses with the NC additional clause, meaning the same thing except also only for non-commercial purposes, whatever that means. And as a final bonus, in the bot bottom you have the CC0 license, um, which is also something that authors may choose to use. And basically this says that the authors uh, give up all exclusive rights that they possibly can according to their national law. So usually uh, even the requirement to mention the author goes away when something is CC0 licensed. And that's it. That's the basic structure of how copyright works. So all original works automatically gain copyright protection and then quite a few uh, commercially important work such as photographs and multimedia also has automatic protection and then it's just the author who gets to publish, make copies and distribute and perform those works unless some permission is granted in the form of uh, limitation of those exclusive rights in the law for example citation rights or if the author makes a contract with another party for example, a book author makes a 
contract with a book publisher, um, or if the author attaches an open license, a Creative Commons license or something else, to their work where they give rights to everybody in the world to do something with their content. So, thank you for your interest and um, feel free to be in touch if you have any, any questions or comments regarding the, uh, the presentation. And as I mentioned, this presentation is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution share alike, which means that you can copy this presentation, you can uh, play it out loud and you know, perform it to a public uh, in any, any venue. You may take the uh, audio recording and the, uh, the slides, take parts of those, change those, create your own presentation. Uh, you just need to mention me as the author of, of the original work from which you've taken parts and into your own work. And that's it.